What are you doing in there? You ready to drive it around? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Don't worry guys, I buckled him in. I knew that you guys would have a fit if I didn't buckle him in while he was sitting in this seat, so safety first. This is good, right? Oil's going back in the engine. So it was about a year ago that we got to go up to Canada and meet Rich and Aaron from the Boss Garage, and we did that video on the truck. And reading the comments on that video, I found it surprising how many people were really surprised that this thing held eight gallons of oil. I mean, it is a lot of oil, but for those of you who don't know, I work on generators for kind of, I wear a couple hats, so. But one of my duties is working on generators, mainly PM type stuff. And eight gallons really isn't that much for a you know, big diesel or natural gas engine. We have a couple of 3412 cats, which uh, are very big, they're V12s. The two that we have are natural gas. They hold 55 gallons of oil. So when you think of it, you know, eight gallons really isn't that much. I thought about changing it out for the uh, shallow pan, which holds significantly less oil, but then I didn't. Speaking of DeBoss Garage, the International Car Show is approaching. It's honestly kind of depressing because that means the last car show was a year ago, and uh, I thought I'd be driving this thing around by now, but sometimes life gets in the way, you know, kids moving, that kind of stuff, and uh, slows down productivity. You know, slowly but surely we're making progress, and this time around, Things just seem to be going together a lot faster. That's kind of my goal, is to have this thing running. Probably not driving. My issue with driving is I don't have a trans control yet, and I haven't really figured that out yet. Uh, I talked to Jason from TransmissionTuner.com or something like that. He sent me some information on a TCM that they sell and tune and wiring harness and basically everything I would need to make that transmission work behind this engine with cruise control and everything else and the price tag was pretty hefty on that just really don't have the money for it right now so the plan was to sell off the other 3126 and md3060 and use that money to pay for the tcm and i did sell the 3126 actually quite a while ago now but i have not sold the md3060 i kind of need to sell them both in order to have enough money for the tcm speaking of money I have had a couple of people tell me that I need to start a Patreon or a PayPal or a membership. PayPal seemed easy enough, so I started one of those. Links in the description. If you guys are enjoying the build and would like to help out this train wreck, I really I feel really weird about that. So that's seven gallons. We gotta be getting close. We'll check it. Let's see, but I'm pretty sure last time it took all eight and loved every drop of it. Way too much. Perfect. This is how you can tell the true professionals from the amateurs. Look at that. Two little drips. Hardly a drop spilled. I was going to say that about four gallons in, and I knew if I got cocky, I'd get all over the place. A few people asked me what kind of fluid I was planning on using for the uh, transmission. I went with Transcend. This stuff's only like $50 a gallon, so I'm still a little sore, but you know, I had a few people tell me you can just run like Dex 3 in it. You know, that Allison says to run the, the TES 295 fluid in it. And they have a whole list of you know, approved fluids. Did I put that plug in? Probably. But like really they're all about the same, you know, they're all expensive. Uh, a lot of people said that this stuff here, they noticed better shifts and just junk like that. So I said, why not? You only live once. 
a few episodes back when I made the uh, dipstick tube, it was quite a struggle to get the dipstick in and out because of how many bends there are in it. And the viewer actually suggested brazing a ball bearing to the end of the dipstick. Thank you, buddy, because that definitely improved this process here. Still not uh, fantastic, but it's easier than it was. It's got fluid on it, but I think that's just from the uh, dipstick too. We'll just add all three, why not? Jeez. Look at that, it's like a dollar's worth I just lost right there. It's probably like the last clip for you guys, but it's been like a week for me or so. I mentioned something about money and like, I don't even remember what all I said, but I don't think I ever got to the point of my story there. Basically, the point of my story is I don't, I'd like to fire the truck up, but I don't have the money for the trans controller yet. I just don't know what the transmission is going to do without a trans controller. I'd like to think that the Allison uh, engineers had like the foresight to put in some sort of, you know, like fail safe. Because it, it's not push button shift, so it's cable driven. So I'd like to think, you know, it's got, you know, without the electronics, it defaults to, you know, some sort of manual regulated line pressure and like maybe it'll give you like second gear as like a get you home kind of deal but i don't know that for sure and i don't really want to damage anything trying to find out i'm not looking to drive it around like this i just want to fire the truck up you know get it started running so then we can work on other stuff and save up money for the uh, trans controller so if any of you know what will the transmission do if i have no electronics hooked to it let me know if not we'll all find out together Red. All right, guys, so we're making some progress here on the old F-350. Um, it has engine oil, it has transmission fluid, it has power steering fluid. I, I didn't shoot any footage of me putting the power steering system together because I really didn't change anything on the power steering system. All of my lines just bolted right up. And uh, so we got the reservoir on right there, you can see. And we got the cooler mounted back up. So everything for the power steering system is ready to go, including the Hydra Boost unit. Um, and it's full and there's no leaks yet. Give it time. Give it time. And I know he should definitely have his protective bubble. But anyways, but I was getting ready to put my intercooler piping on. You can see I got it here on the bench. And uh, I was going to go ahead and get it cleaned up. And, you know, I just started looking at them. I can do so much better than this. It wasn't the best to begin with. You can see I have quite a few couplings in it. It worked, but I was constantly blowing boost couplers. In fact, you can see this one here with the two zip ties. Uh, that was because I got sick of looking for the uh, clamp when it went flying. When it blew apart, it would hold the clamp right there. I think I'm going to order a steel piping kit and weld all the joints except for where it hooks up to the intercooler, turbo, and the intake. That way it reduces my number of silicone couplers from, I don't know, like 10 down to 4. So it'll be less chance of uh, blowing boost couplers. Uh, I think it'll also look a little neater than this, and then I'll just paint it black. I'd go with aluminum or stainless, but I don't have the means of welding either of those. So... This guy's heavy. I switch arms. <laughs> Also got both of the uh, battery brackets all mounted up. I got my heater core lines hooked up. I was able to get that flushed out the other day. So, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We're kind of getting to a point where uh, I need to start tackling the wiring, which I'm really not looking forward to. It's all part of it, so. But we need to do the wiring. We still got to do the air system. Trans controller and brakes too. We got to do the brakes. I did order a bunch of stuff from Summit. I'm going to be doing dash 3 AN from the master cylinder down the firewall, then doing hard line. I think that'll look a little bit cleaner than trying to run the uh, hard line up to the master cylinder. <laughs> little, little guy loves to be scared. Watch this. Ah! Ah! Um, 
I was going to replace this steering shaft. Uh, mine seems to be a little bit seized there at that slip joint, you know, and it's old. But then I went online. Ah, oh, what the heck, dude? I went online and started looking at these, and uh, I saw the price tag. So we'll probably just be uh, hitting this one some, with some PB Blaster. Maybe we'll paint it and make it look new and then slap it back on. You want to go back inside? Alright, so I got this steering shaft kind of tore apart. These things are pretty simple. On the bottom end here, you just got a little tiny itty bitty universal joint it's staked in so you can't change it out. Really handy. And then on this end, it's got this rubber piece here, which is supposed to help, you know, isolate your hands from the road so you don't feel as much of the, the vibration and shock when you hit bumps and stuff like that. Okay. Ugh, I just had that out of there. Please enjoy this music while your party is reached. Caught it with my foot. Just glad I was wearing my safety cracks. Once you pop that apart, this is your inner shaft. It's got this plastic nylon sleeve on here, and then this little spring clip inside of there, and there's supposed to be a piece that uh, holds this nylon piece in place. And I guess it's fairly common for those spring clips to break, and this whole plastic piece just to fall out, and you lose that bushing, which gives you a lot of slop in your old steering wheel. And the best part is, you know, Ford does not sell parts for these. So like this 30 cent piece of plastic here and you know, this 20 cent spring clip, you can't buy those. You gotta buy the whole $400 shaft, $500 shaft, you know, and they come with those. So why would they just sell that? So anyways, we got it apart. Uh, our spring clip is still there. Our plastic bushing thing is kind of beat but it's still there for now. So I think we're gonna grease it up. It was pretty rusted down inside of there. Hit that with a wire brush. Got it cleaned out inside of there. And uh, we're gonna put some fresh grease on this old girl. Slap it back together and uh, wait for it to break again and then we'll fix it again. Like I said, we might clean it up and paint it also. So, yeah. All right guys, so we're gonna be changing gears here a little bit. Um, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I wanted to get this thing running for the DeVos Garage Car Show. You know, just because I wanted to have a goal, you know, hold myself to it. I don't know, I thought it would just be cool to have it start up for that video, for my video entry, you know, so I could drive it to the car show. Um, I thought I had more time, but they posted a video yesterday saying that you have a week to get your entries in. So, here we go. I was doing some like piddly stuff that like needs to be done, but like doesn't need to be done to make it run. Uh, so we're going to hold off on that. We're going to switch gears here. We're going to get the fuel system primed. Maybe we'll I don't think we'll need them, but we'll, maybe we'll get the brake, brakes bled. It's not going to be running off the key. So like none of the gauges are going to work. That kind of stuff. I'm just going to hotwire the ECM, jump the starter just so we can get it to run. Pull it right onto their web page, shut it down, and let people check it out. Let's get to work on that. All right, so we got air pressure currently going to the tank. I'm trying to uh, bleed the fuel filters. I don't have any type of electric or hand pump anymore on the fuel system, so there's not really any good way to fill the filters besides pressurizing the tank. Uh, so I just got some shop air going to it. Someone asked where my compressor was because you never hear it running. And, hey, 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 get in here. I told you, stay in the garage. If you want to know where my air compressor is, you can watch this video. Because it is not in the garage and currently it's kind of broken. I need to go reset the circuit breaker on it. So we got air pressure going into the tank. I got my batteries kind of temporarily thrown up in here. We have fuel through this lower, the primary filter. So now we're just trying to fill the secondary filter. But it also has to push through the lift pump. Which the little bit of air pressure that we have going in the system right now doesn't seem to be enough on its own to overcome the springs in there and uh, get up through that. 
Leave them on, please. All right, I'm going to make some noise. Are you good with that? Yeah. It's funny, she's usually scared of noise, but um, for some reason, she's not scared of this. So I've been cranking on it a little bit, and we haven't gotten anything yet. So, still got to finish filling it up. Hey, come here. You ready for noise? Yeah. All right, here we go. Ready? Is that cool? Yeah. Still got nothing. So we're gonna keep at this. I'm gonna have to do this a few more times with the batteries charge up and uh, keep on keeping on. Exciting stuff. Truck hasn't turned over in a very long time. So uh, the ECM is all disconnected so the injectors aren't trying to fire or nothing. So this is basically just pumping oil through the engine, getting things lubricated before we actually try to start it. I'm going to go back to uh, wiring. So for now I'm just tearing everything out of my ECM connector so that I can just tie in the stuff that we need to make it fire. And uh, we'll get back to this rat's nest at a future date. Alright guys. All right guys, so that's gonna be it for this video. We got a lot accomplished really quickly and some of the stuff didn't get covered in this video, but after the uh, car show entry video, we'll go, we'll kind of backtrack and cover that stuff. But uh, you're gonna have to wait to see, uh, wait to see if it fires up and what happens. So yeah, be sure to tune in later this week. We're gonna be uh, releasing that video for the car show entry. We're definitely making some progress on the F-350 and uh, exciting stuff is happening. I mean, it made noise, right? Like, it made starter noises anyways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell so you get notified so that way you don't miss out on any of this content. How the heck did this get all muddy? Anyways, we'll see you in the next one. You say goodbye? Bye. Say love you. Love you.